tomorrow morning and work. Of course, I'm being responsible. I always think of you. I just want to go for a drink with the guys. I can't talk any longer now. Gokwell, meine Damen und Herren, this is Hendrik Ibsen and excuse me, but I've said it 139 years ago, it's not gonna work like this. Relationships don't work when one is the other's doll. That's just as if we were all plastic people. What? Yeah. So let's have a look into the doll's house and please learn something from it. Today's cast are Nora Helmer, the young wife of the advocate Torwald Helmer. He's elder, more reasonable and earns the family's money, which gives him a natural dominance over his little squirrel birdie doll. At least she's given birth to three children, so she actually did accomplish something. Up till now, the financial situation of the couple has been somewhat difficult, but in the new year, he's going to start a new job as a bank director. The Helmer's family friend is Dr. Rank, a medical doctor who has a mean form of syphilis called tuberculosis of the spine, so he's terminally ill and visits them every day because he doesn't have anybody else. Then there is Christine Linde, a teenage friend of Nora's, who's new in town after having looked after a mother who died a while ago. Finally, there's Krogstadt. He's on the one hand an ex-lover of Christine and on the other hand a teenage friend of Torvalds, who regrets that now because Krogstadt has been following a crooked path. Thirdly, he also knows Nora in a mysterious way, which we'll find out about in the course of the play. And there's the children and the nanny, and it's Christmas Eve, which is why Nora has been doing a little last-minute Christmas shopping. She returns home and her husband goes, Has my little squirrel been hoarding up again? Just a teensy little bit of luxury on account of the new job? No, no luxury and no new debts. Okay, okay. And what has my little squirrel bought herself for Christmas? Some new lingerie, perhaps? No, I'd like money, please, as a present. Oh, well, uh, here you go then. But don't spend it on sweets. No, of course not. And he's hardly gone when she's nibbling away at some macaroons, being the rodent she is. And Mrs. Linde comes. Huh? Oh, Christine, my, I haven't seen you in years. Oh, condolences. You're a widow now, aren't you? I'm so sorry, but we're quite well. You know, Torvald is going to be a bank director soon. How nice that I'm unemployed. Really? You can be his new secretary. Oh, that's so empathic of you, uh, as you don't know what it means to be broke. What? If you knew, Torvald was quite sick and I secretly borrowed the money for an extremely expensive trip to Italy for him to get well. Hello? Huh? Huh? Don't worry, I'm going to see your husband. You know him? Well, he had a crush on me once. When Dr. Rank enters, who is significantly more welcome? Oh, hello, Dr. Rank. This is Christine Linde. You fancy a macaroon? I thought this was contraband in the house. <laughs> When Torvald enters, huh, uh, Christina just brought me some macaroons. And by the way, she's your new secretary. Oh, indeed. Then let's all go. And Nora is alone with her children for a moment. Hello, children. I'm always so happy to see you, especially as I can drop you with a nanny immediately again, which is what she does, and Krogstadt returns. Sorry. Huh, but the rate isn't due until the first. Yes, your husband wants to hire this Mrs. Linde. Yeah. That means he wants to chuck me out. Now listen, either you make him keep me or I will tell him about our little deal. You can't do that. Yes, I can. I've gone over to the dark side once and I was just about to recover my status as a respectable citizen and he's not going to destroy that. You have forged your father's signature on the bond. That's called forgery. If you let me down, I'll blow the bomb. And if I ask very... No. And he's hardly gone when Torvald comes home. Hello, whoa, you're overwhelming today, darling. Has someone been here while I was away? No. And Krogstadt? Oh yes, he was here. Did he by any chance ask you to put in a good word for him? Yeah. Never lie to me again. Goodness me, what has the poor man done? He has forged signatures, so he's basically a rapist, a pedophile, a terrorist. Oh, no. So Nora finds herself in quite a mess, which chimes in nicely with the fact that it's Christmas on the next day and presents are being distributed. And Mrs. Linde comes, Christina, you've got to help me. My Capri Fisher maiden costume's damaged. Can you sew this for me? Okay, but this doctor thing has to stop. What doctor thing? He's lent you the money you mentioned yesterday, didn't he? No, he's just, but I've got to get out of that story. Oops, uh, Torwald's coming. Please go next door. And he enters. She goes, couldn't you please keep Krogstadt if your little squirrel asks you ever so nicely? No fucking way, because I want to hire Mrs. Linde instead. Why don't you check out someone else? I'm sure he'd talk shit about us. Most certainly not. People might think my wife had anything to say, and I can't stand it when he addresses me informally in front of others. But that's petty of you. Petty? Bang! And he sends off his notice of termination. Exit Torvald, enter rank. Hello, hello, cheer up, will you? I'm sick to death, but don't worry. When it's time, I'll send you a business card with a cross on it. Could you do me a favor? Annie. But it's a big one. I'd die for you because I'll... No, I don't want to hear this. And she covers her ears. But I only wanted to say that I la No! Now I can't ask you that favor. Thanks a bunch, you sod. Off your hop. And Krogstadt comes. 
So he wants to chuck you out. Okay, then I'll chuck in the letter I've prepared for your husband. I'll kill myself. Yeah, but still. And he posts the letter. No, Christina, help me. And she comes. Listen, I forged a signature to lend the money and Krogstadt's blackmailing me. So it's him. Can you make him take back the letter he sent to my husband? I can try it. After all, he was in love with me once. Please. And she follows Krogstadt. Then her husband and Dr. Rank enter again. I thought you were rehearsing your Capri Fisher Maiden performance with extra Tarantella for tonight's ball. But I can't do that without you, my big strong director. Please tell me what to do. And don't open any letters until tomorrow. It's always this evil work. Okay, then it's dancing lesson now. And he gets out his virtual writing crop. Right, jump, dance, skip it. That's the way. Yeah, teach me, master. And the third act begins in the middle of the night while the costume ball is still running and Christine waits for Nora wearing the costume she's repaired when Krogstad enters going, ha! Ha! Ah, that's good, we gotta talk. Really? About what? Yeah, I know I stood you up back then, but uh, you're a widower now and I'm a widow and you've got two children someone needs to look after. Uh, and you want to do this? Yes, please, I need to care for someone, please. Oh, that's really tempting. Wait a minute, you're only doing this because you're Nora's friend and want me to take back my letter. No, uh, she's got to go through this. That's surprising. And he goes, what? Oh, cool. Let's go then, honey. I'll be right with you. And he goes and the Helmers return home. Nora's wearing her Capri Fisher maiden costume. Oh, you look splendid. Uh, by the way, I talked to Krogstadt. Don't worry about him, but he hasn't taken back the letter. An exit and Nora goes, <gasps> right, my little squirrel. Let's see if the waltzing mouse will dance to my flute. No, I don't want to. And Dr. Rank knocks and Torvald goes, how nice of you to call in the middle of the night. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? And it was a nice ball as well, and I have certainty now. About what? Not having to trouble myself about a costume for the next ball. And he goes, leaving something in the letterbox. Let's go to bed then. No, 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 I can't now. Then I'll go to the letters from the box. No! But there was such a load of junk leaflets in there that the newspaper wouldn't have fit in tomorrow, and Rank has posted as a business card with a cross. What? Then he's dying soon. Really? Let's go to bed. No, Rank is dying. Then I'll read my letters now. No! And he's hardly gone to the office reading his letters when he furiously stomps in again, going, Nora, you know what this is? Yes. Is this true? Yes. You liar, you slut, you forger, you've ruined me. You can blackmail me now. I'll tell you what happens now. We'll do as if nothing had changed, as if our marriage was going just normal, but you'll never get into contact with the children again, and there'll never be anything between the two of us either. Is that clear? And she goes, aha. When the doorbell rings. What? Another letter? Yeah, I'm saved. And I? Yeah, well, we, we are saved. Krogstadt's together with Mrs. Linde now, and here he sends the lending bond. And he chucks it into the fire and goes, Whew, uh, that was a close shave. I pardon you. Oh, really? Didn't you hear me? I pardon you. Yes, and I'm leaving. And she changes and comes back, going, right. Uh, what are you doing there? Listen, I'm neither a circus pony, nor a doll, nor a dog. We've never had a serious talk in our lives. I don't love you. But, no buts. First you want to drill me, then you want to lock me up. But if you loved me, which is not such a bad base for a relationship, you hadn't said what you said a while ago. Goodbye. And in a remarkable act of awakening, Nora breaks out of this appalling doll's house and begins a life of her own. And this, dear congregation, was A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen. <laughs> Thank you.